Over the past decade or so, not only has the rate of young people getting cosmetic procedures skyrocketed, but the phenomenon that's happening on social media is that you're seeing a new level of transparency. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is a massive day for me because I am getting my first ever filler done. Yeah, I'm about to get all these needles on my face, I'm scared. <laughs> This little moment is what I live for. To assume that influencers can demystify plastic surgery and empower their followers to make informed choices, that assumes that the influencers have the knowledge base in order to do that. But what I found through my reporting is that in most cases, influencers don't. By leaving it up to the influencers, you're perpetuating a cycle of ignorance and also misinformation. Lip fillers, nose jobs, BBLs. If you're on social, you see people all over TikTok and IG doing it, sharing what they've done to their face or their body. A lift and tuck, an injection or two or three or more, and some of them are drawing millions of views. The hashtags are everywhere. Hashtag lip filler has nearly 3 billion views. Hashtag BBL has over 7 billion views. Other hashtags like plastic surgery, nose job, and cheek filler have also gone viral. But here's the thing. There is a lot going on beyond the spike of plastic surgery on social media. It's kind of spreading from our phones to IRL. In the early days of internet influencers, beauty companies recognized the power of these new digital stars. In the era that was around 2015 to 2019, the beauty industry ruled the internet. A lot of people were developing large online platforms because of the way that they did their makeup. There was Michelle Phan, Candy Johnson, Ingrid Nilsson. But in the last few years, younger audiences have been moving to TikTok. It's very rare, except for in places like LA, that you'll drive down the street and see a billboard advertising breast augmentation or a nose job. But on TikTok, the essential internet highway, you are constantly surrounded by these sort of billboards that are advertising these sorts of procedures and changes. Tell me what we're doing today. Okay, so I definitely think I need to do some under eye. Okay. Um, I feel like I can see it through all my makeup, so I need to definitely do some of that, super deep. A little bit 10 years ago, it was very uncommon for people to broadcast the aesthetic procedures that they were doing. And now, it's, the iPhone is kind of like the third person in the room, where they're like, will you take a picture of this? Or some, they're doing a little selfie video while I've got a needle going in their face. Dr. Denti Engelman is a board-certified dermatologist in New York City. I feel like every year my patient demographic gets younger and younger. I have patients in my demographic who are like, is it time for Botox? And then I have patients 20 years younger who are like, it's not a matter of if, it's when. And they're ready to go, even if they don't haven't yet been assessed by me as to need it. According to an Aesthetic Society survey in 2021, cosmetic surgical procedures increased by more than 50%. Non-invasive procedures like Botox and fillers increased by nearly the same margin. Drawing the line between something that we can change and something that we can accept is our biggest battle these days. I think we are living in a culture where we are striving to be our best selves. And technology and modern medicine has given us access to better control aging and confidence issues. And I think the true test of figuring out where to draw the lines is just to notice what it makes you feel inside. We are walking in now. I'm super, super excited. Hey guys, I just put on my robe. I'm waiting for the doctor to come in. This is. The Damaris Martinez is a 25-year-old influencer in Miami. She says she started getting Botox enhancement at 21. Since then, she's gotten breast augmentation, rhinoplasty, and lip fillers, and shared nearly all of it, step-by-step, step, for her tens of thousands of followers on Instagram and TikTok. I believe surgeries are empowering, and I'm not pro-surgery, but I'm pro-choice, doing whatever makes you happy. If surgery makes you happy, then do it. Don't listen to the negativity. But don't just do it because everyone else is doing it. Don't just do it to fit in. Do it because you want to do it for you. Do it because you're insecure about how you feel and it's going to make you happier, but not because you want to fit in. Hello. 
Hi. Can we film for my yeah. channel too? Okay. For sure. Hi guys. Hi. Guess who we're with? The one and the only, your favorite aesthetic injector ever. This is Sheridan, a 25-year-old influencer living in Rochester, Michigan. She says she got her first lip filler at 21. Sheridan has more than 20,000 followers on TikTok and Instagram combined. She began posting about her journey with fillers four years ago. It wasn't a difficult decision, but it was one that required a lot of thought and effort into making it, I guess, because I didn't know anybody other than these YouTubers who I made friends with, which, you know, I didn't know them. I just got their advice and insight and whatever. So after my first session, I think I went back maybe a good six to eight months later and ended up doing more filler um, and kind of enhancing and building on the look that we had already started on. And from there, I would say it was like that sort of regular type of process almost. Since then, Sheridan says she's gotten several procedures done, like cheek filler and Botox. Oh, hi guys. So we're joining. People are joining. And what are you guys up to? Let me know in the comments. I'm doing my hair because I'm actually going to get my lips done later. And my Botox. This, it really is a full-time job. And I honestly love it. I love it so much. It's so creative and you get to be so free and passionate and share what you want. It's also extremely exhausting. There's no formula for how to make a living as an influencer. Sheridan says she promotes products and gets paid for her posts, but she also works as a freelance video editor for beauty brands, a confidence coach, and a virtual assistant for podcast management. I think there's a lot of pressure to perform well as a creator. Obviously, it's not always about the numbers, but it is. And there's a lot of ways you can look at someone else things that they're doing, even their aesthetic, even if you're not even looking at their numbers and you're like, oh wow, their production looks really good. You know, you can tell XYZ went into making a certain video. They got a, must have got a new copywriter or took a course or whatever. And you can really tell that people are up leveling their content. Increasingly, especially due to platforms like TikTok, uh, we're seeing just average everyday people who don't necessarily have big social media audiences going online and making content about their desire to have procedures done. And then when they do get those procedures, they'll post things like befores and afters, or they'll talk about what the procedure was like. Anytime I post about body augmentation on TikTok, at least 500,000 views. Many influencers say their views go up when they get new procedures done to their bodies. That's when they enter what some experts call the negative feedback loop. The idea that feedback and engagement on social media pressures influencers to get more work done. You want your content to be appealing to as many people as possible. That's how you grow your audience and increasingly that's how you make money. So when it comes to appearances, when you're trying to make your appearance match the common denominator of what people are looking for, that is where the plastic surgery industry has been able to take advantage of the online dynamics that are guiding how people present themselves online. My favorite age group to work with are young adults in their 20s. And the reason I say that is because they don't have enough life history to help inform their future and the decisions they're making. But the 20s is really the time where their mind and body start to really communicate and they start to make decisions for themselves. And one of those decisions is how they treat their body, what they do with their self-esteem and the kind of decisions they make all around that. Okay, so we all know what an influencer is, but how do they really get paid? There are a lot of different ways for influencers to make money. One of the most traditional ways that people often think of first is SponCon. SponCon, when a brand and influencer basically make a deal. This could be a brand sending free products to an influencer and paying them to post about it. The special relationship between creators and viewers increasingly drive what people buy. Mainstream entities, mainstream companies, people are discarding these in favor of individuals online who they feel like they can trust, who they feel like they know. This is considered a parasocial relationship in most cases. But it's all pretty new, so some regulations lag behind. There are regulations and guidelines that uh, organizations like the FTC have put out for influencers to use 
But particularly in this world of plastic surgery and cosmetic procedures, what we're really seeing is that influencers are tagging their providers and describing their procedures that they've had done without revealing or disclosing whether or not that procedure was free or reduced for the purpose of the influencer advertising it. That means a beauty influencer can promote a medical procedure without having to say that they've been given it for free or at a discount. In a lot of cases, a provider may expect that the influencer is going to post about the procedure on their story and tag them, which can then direct a lot of attention their way. A lot of times this sort of agreement isn't even spoken out loud. It's just implicit and implied in the way that influencers deal with their platforms and their audiences. People pay me to promote their product and they ship me products to my house like rings, jewelry, pajamas, lingerie. I charge $200 for a story and then I charge more for a page post. I've been just posting, 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 but it's crazy because even when I'm on vacation, I still can't enjoy my vacation. I feel like I'm still working because people start commenting, are you vlogging? Are you vlogging? Even if I'm relaxing, I'm still working. TikTok actively pushes viral content you don't follow to your feed, so you're more likely to be exposed to new content. And all of that has created an environment where some beauty influencers are thriving. There are so many different levels of being an influencer. At the very top, you have some of the richest young people on the planet. Then we come into the term micro-influencer. And some people may be micro-influencers without even realizing it. Both Damaris and Sheridan wouldn't share with us how much they make a year. But according to one survey, influencers with followers like them can make $100,000 to $500,000 a year. According to a TikTok spokesperson, certain cosmetic procedures, such as face and lip fillers, cannot be advertised on the platform. TikTok also says that certain user-generated content, like before and after videos of procedures and posts about elective cosmetic surgery that don't discuss risks, is not pushed to users under 18. But that hasn't stopped plastic surgeons or providers from finding loopholes. One of these loopholes is in having your patient or your client create content about whatever your procedure or your practice is. What this can look like is an influencer may come to get filler in their lips or filler in their cheeks. And as a provider, you may ask them to tag you in a TikTok video. Social media's impact on beauty may be fairly new, but psychologist Dr. Mariana Strongin says obsession with beauty trends is nothing new. Women have been following trends and changing their bodies forever. But I do think now we have more medicine involved in that. Before it was really beauty and fashion. But the question really is, is how far will it go and how far has it come? You could call it a domino effect. A big influencer posts about their procedures, smaller influencers follow, and then their audiences follow suit. People gravitate to like the Kim Kardashian look, the Kylie Jenner look, because it really is what is in style, what is fashionable right now. It is what people want when, when we're talking about the ideal body or the ideal face or the perfect lip, the perfect nose. Dana Omari is a med spa consultant in Houston. She runs a popular Instagram page that takes a look at the potential aesthetic procedures celebs and influencers might have done. She posts about cosmetic procedures and social media beauty culture because she wants to reduce the stigma of plastic surgeries. I talk to people about plastic surgery because I think it's really important that they understand what can be done. When we've made it a taboo subject, people are saying that this is all brand new and that people are getting work done. It's just suddenly happening in the last few years and that's absolutely not true. Stitches are out and I'm cleared for exercise. Not heavy lifting, but like Kylie Jenner exercise. Corsets, tattoos, body piercings, cosmetic surgery, Human beings have always altered our bodies for beauty. And now we have injectable filler. Ever since it was approved for lip augmentation in 2015, Juvederm Ultra XC has become one of the most popular fillers in America. I have temporary lip fillers. It's just an insecurity of mine and it's what I wanted to do. Since Kylie Jenner revealed that on the show in 2015, lip fillers remain one of the most popular aesthetic procedures in America for people under 30. And many influencers and experts have cited her as a primary inspiration. 
According to the American Society of Plastic Surgeons, more than 3.4 million people in America received derma fillers in 2020. The drugs that got you higher more quickly were obviously more addicting. And filler is that most addictive of aesthetics. Botox delayed gratification. You have to wait over almost two weeks for the full high. Filler, I mean, you see, it's like one second it's not there, two seconds later it's there. And so it's very reinforcing as far as a psychological feedback loop of like, wow, if, that's, if that little drop made me look this good, then more must make me look even better. Another popular procedure is the Brazilian butt lift or BBL. It was pioneered by a surgeon named Ivo Pitanga in Brazil in the 1960s, and it has been gaining interest in the last few years. Experts say the resurging idealization of the hourglass figure has been propelled by celebrities like Kim Kardashian, Jennifer Lopez, and Nicki Minaj, making BBLs one of the fastest growing cosmetic surgeries in the US today. But another conversation these cosmetic procedures have brought up, appropriation. So many white influencers right now are getting BBLs to mimic this body type. And this is a form of black fishing. And of course, really luscious lips. Mm -hmm. This fairly new surgery trend, which surprise, surprise, doctors call it the oriental brow lift. Oriental brow lift. Like we always had that naturally, but it was never, oh my God, your slanted upwards eyes are so sexy. <laughs> no. Women of color were shamed for a lot of these body types or these features and considered less attractive or ghetto or whatever it is, some other derogatory term. And then now it's a fashion accessory, especially for white women. Dana points out the danger in stereotypes, especially for women of color, adding that people who don't fit them can feel an extra burden for not checking those boxes. Cosmetic procedures are still medical procedures, but influencers are rarely doctors. As a result, the social media beauty space, like everywhere else online, is full of misinformation. There are a bunch of cosmetic procedures and products being posted about online. There's the legal ones, like lip and jaw fillers, and then there are others that are illegal and considered dangerous, like injecting silicone directly into the breast and buttocks. I don't mind if influencers talk about like their personal experience with what it was like. Influencers certainly have a role, and they can be a great source of education. What I don't love is when it's like, let me be the expert. Take everything with a grain of salt and consider the source of who's providing you the information. I wish I had someone to tell me, like, no, don't get more filler. This is what I look like for literally two years, guys. I look like that. When an influencer creates a piece of content about their use of filler, they're not necessarily going to be talking about the fact that it isn't FDA approved. They're not necessarily going to be talking about the risks or the fact that this procedure is very experimental. A lot of times they may not even know themselves. And that's how misinformation is spread, with influencers often perpetuating a false sense of security to their followers. When a company makes a decision to advertise a product, it goes through levels of different people who are all signing off on that decision. But when an influencer is advertising something, it's usually just up to them. It raises questions of who's to blame if something goes wrong. Yeah, baby. So in 2020, I started hanging out with other influencers. I had this one friend, she used to try to break me down all the time, but she had butt shots too, and she's the one who convinced me to get butt shots. And she used to be like, oh, you have an ugly face, you have a big nose, so you should just do your butt so more guys could like you. So Damaris says she got the injections done at an illegal provider's home. When I did get my butt shots in 2020, I started getting more followers. I got hydrogel injections. Hydrogel injections for butt augmentation are not approved by the FDA. Hydrogel is partly made of silicone. And when silicone is injected into the buttocks, it can travel to other parts of the body and block blood vessels in the lungs, heart, and brain. This can lead to a stroke or even death. So I got referred by that one friend that went to the doctor and she said she had it for four years. She had no complications. I saw her results. I love them. You should not be pumping silicone into any part of your body. You cannot be injecting silicone straight into your butt. That is illegal. It is dangerous. That is not what a BBL is. That is not what implants are. No one should ever do that. 
Good morning, y'all. I look crazy right now. I'm running on zero hours of sleep. Like, I, I always tell my younger followers, don't compare yourself to me. We're two different people, and no one knows what I actually went through to get all this surgery. And I always tell my followers, do what makes you happy and follow your heart. Do not follow everyone else. Well, beauty has always been a privilege of class. It doesn't matter if it's injections or surgeries or makeup or facials, whatever it is, the wealthier you are, the more resources you have to look better. Things like Botox and fillers have helped people who are aging have better control. However, when it's done with the younger generation, it does worry me um, because there's this idea that we're striving for something that might look quite perfect. And we all know that that's not achievable. I do think that a lot of people who start injectables and aesthetic procedures too early, they actually lose their youthful appearance. Um, they be almost become age androgynous where they look good, but they don't look their age. They don't look 22, they look 35 or they could be 40 or they could be 20. And that's the conversation I have with my young, young patients all the time is, the one thing that I cannot inject into you is your actual youth. I don't really regret falling into the trend because it did help me feel more confident. It did make more people notice me and it did make me happier. I just feel like I regret falling victim to the trend so soon. I feel like I would have been more comfortable doing it now at 24 years old versus when I was 21. Because you're into beauty or wanting to feel your best doesn't make you a bad person, doesn't make you a vain person even. You can care about your look and how you look and how you feel. You can want to feel beautiful and have a heart. We love good looking people. That's what makes the world go around. <laughs>